This is a half-scale replica of an almost forgotten aero engine belonging to the pre-First World War period, between about 1908 and 1912. It's an ENV, an Anglo-French company that produced a small number of water-cooled V8s for the pioneer pilots of the day, notably Tom Sopwith, A.V. Rowe, Claude Graham White, Houdini, and many others. The engines were considered comparatively reliable and reasonably light in weight for their power. Of the 200 or so thought to have been built, there are only four or five survivors of this, the 60 horsepower Type F version, dating to 1910. One is owned but not displayed by London Science Museum. Another is at Old Rhinebeck in the USA and there are two or three in Europe. Needless to say, none of them work. So I decided it was high time that a working model was built, as large and as accurate in detail as possible, and it's taken about five years. There were, of course, no drawings to be found anywhere, so I had to make my own by studying the example kept here in the UK. It has a one-piece crankcase with a crankshaft supported in ball bearings. This was not unusual in those days when it was thought that ball bearings were the coming thing. We now know better, for piston engines don't really like them. Many people comment on the beautiful copper-clad cylinders. These are the thin water jackets made by electroforming, the result requiring no rubber seals. The technique was well known to Victorian sculptors and engineers, but expensive and complicated to do. I found it very difficult, but got there in the end. The induction pipe work was done in the same way. The bore is just over two inches, and the total capacity about 900 cc. Sorry, 950 cc. It has a very early Zenith carburetor, probably the first designed for aircraft use by the inventor, Monsieur Bavary. I made a scale model of this, and amazingly, it works. ENV, by the way, is a French acronym for en V, or in a V, referring to the cylinder layout. The V8 was, of course, a French invention from the 1890s. The company gave up on aero engines in 1912 and thereafter concentrated on gearboxes, for which it became well known, especially in the helicopter industry. And the company was based in Wilston, just outside London. It finally went bust in about 1968 and is now completely forgotten. But Sopwith said during an interview shortly before his death in the 1980s that he learned to fly with this engine and made friends with both it and the Howard Wright biplane that eventually won him much prize money. With that, he was able to start up his company, Sopwith Aviation, and the rest is, as they say, history. I like to think of the little ENV as the very beginning of an illustrious history of British aviation. Here you will see it being run, one of the first runs with its propeller. There is of course a start-up procedure written on a card, but I'd forgotten to read it properly and didn't set the choke correctly, so it took seven swings to get going. Hang on, let's get that around there. Yeah, get that around there. Control. Okay. Yep. Right, switch is on. Yep.
fantastic. Well done, you. Got there. Well done. That is all right. Brilliant. We yeah. can now invite dignitaries. <laughs>